Hi and welcome back to another video of JPlay. I am Marcus and today I will start my solo playthrough of Archipelago. And guys, I really, really, really appreciate the vast amount of comments and votes I received when I asked you to vote for my next playthrough. I really, really appreciate it. I don't find the right word, so I will just dive into the playthrough right now. And as I mentioned, I'm using the official solo expansion here and I decided to go with a medium length scenario so I only took the cards for the medium length scenario and yeah basically chose the first card that popped up basically and this is the Robinson Crusoe scenario and after thinking about this one it really seems to be pretty tough to be honest so I have no idea if I will totally blow it whatever after round two or so maybe there's really a chance that I can lose this scenario in the very first round basically but I will come to that the starting parameters in this one are relatively straightforward I start on this island tile I have only one citizen with me that's practically me Robinson Crusoe. The game will end when I got six of those development cards and really doesn't matter if it's uh, the development or a character or whatnot and then it's time to score. So at the end of this round I will then see how many florins I have and yeah see for yourself below 40 that's the bronze then 40 to 75 that would be the silver medal and more than 75 would be a gold medal. To be honest, I have no idea if we'll make it over 10 florins, to be honest, but yeah, let's wait and see. And this is basically the starting setup, so that would be me, hello, and I'm on this island. Good thing is, I'm not alone, I have three unemployed workers waiting to get hired, that's really important because I'm alone, I cannot reproduce and I need workers, that's for sure. I can find some wood and I also can find some cattle, which might help me in in order to get some resources which I then would be able to sell to the local market because again I want to get as many florins as possible by the end of round six. Why is that round six? Because in the solo expansion I have to buy one development card per round. If I cannot afford to buy any of those cards I immediately lose this game. As I start the game with zero florins this is already challenging but here is already the commercial fishing and this only cost me three florins at this point in time and can provide me two fish which I then would be able to sell to the local market so this is definitely a development card I will look out for but I'm already ahead of myself let's have a look at the various yeah market boards here they are set up practically similar to the multiplayer game so you start in the local market with a resource of any kind of course no resource here on the foreign market right now there is only one citizen that's basically me we don't have any insurgent or rebellion waiting for us that's a good thing because that's another way to lose this game whenever this meeple here basically takes over the white meeple in this case we automatically lose the game as well so you don't want to have too many insurgents in your colony and as there are three huts on our starting tile we start the game with three surplus or basically unemployed workers here on this board basically some natives waiting to get hired by us we also start the game with three of those action discs here, though there is a way to get more of those action discs, basically up to five we can have. This depends on how well we will be able to explore the archipelago here. And yeah, right now that's really a problem because we are Robinson Crusoe after all, so we don't have a ship. So the first thing to do is definitely to build a ship. Or one of the first thing that we have to do is to build a ship. That's really important because this will then also help us yeah, to explore new lands. And yeah, this will grant us a lot of additional resources, discovery tokens, additional workers, you name it. As we don't have a turn zero in the solo mode of the game, we can directly jump into turn number one. And there we also have to jump over several phases. So for example, the disengagement phase is skipped during turn one because all our workers are basically active. 
we will also not see an order of play of course we are playing alone after all so we can jump directly into the so-called population effects but of course right now there is not much to do because all of those tracks are right now pretty let's say untouched by us so they will do us or they won't harm us in any way but let's have a closer look on those boards you will always start with board number one then we would go to board number two three and four and you would basically see for example how many resources are currently available so for example if there would be a surplus of fruit or food here basically available uh, so we would if this market the local market would have been filled until this row here then this would mean we would have overproduction and this would create a surplus of unemployed workers which we would then uh, just here on the worker board so we would jump from three to four for once we would basically make the workforce cheaper. So right now each worker costs us four florin, which is quite a lot, to three, which is still quite a lot, but at least they won't produce any additional insurgency because they're really all tied together. So those strings are really well connected overall. So one screw affects the other really much like a butterfly effect and definitely one of the best market effects I have seen in a board game so far, that's for sure. Then we would do the same on board number two and of course board number three where would we check for population. So for example, if we would have 11 workers or more, this would also produce an additional surplus of unemployed workers. And if it would be in 21, everyone of the natives would really feel yeah, some kind of unrest and would start to revolt. So this would, for example, increase the amount of insurgents on the archipelago. Right now, in this row, there is nothing to do. So last but not least, we would come back to board number four and would also adjust the insurgent level according to the number of unemployed citizens on the island. Right now, we are in the first row here, so we would even lose one insurgent, would really make him happy. But right now, we don't have any insurgents here, so we can also skip this board here. Next, we would check for the balance on the archipelago, but this is also something we skip during the very first round. So we can also get rid of this pile of development cards and then we can actually start playing the game. So we dive directly into the action phase. For once, we can harvest some of the resources, we can recruit, we can reproduce Apparently you need two meeples in order to do that. We can levy some taxes here. We can discover the archipelago. We can migrate. We can trade with the markets. We can build and can use those two spaces, but therefore we would need the local market for once, or let's say a harbor in order to do so. Right now, we definitely have to harvest some resources and I'm thinking of harvesting wood here because if I buy woods to the foreign market which I can do later on I would gain seven florins whereas I would only get five or six florins when selling cattle either to the foreign or the export market or to the local market so I think wood it is so let's place our very first action disc. You can basically place an unlimited amount of action discs on any of those spaces. Some of those spaces are limited, but I come to that later on when I use the other actions. Let's move our dude here onto the resource space. For once we are indicating, hey, we have already used this space and we are also indicating, hey, this worker is no longer available this turn. So I can basically not use this guy, basically us, for anything else but of course we are still allowed to grab one resource from the bank in this case this would be a wooden resource <laughs> this is <laughs> it's apparently a wooden resource but this represents wood and one thing to mention is those resources are really limited so when they are out they are basically out but this doesn't happen too often in the solo game i think and as I need some cash, I will definitely deal with the market. So I will place the next action disc onto this space here. And this allows me to either deal with the domestic or the export market here. I already told you what I was up to. So in this case, I will sell my only 
piece of wood to the export market and this would give me seven florin in total not such a bad start but of course i definitely have to spend those coins as i have to hire additional workforce right now that's the only way how i get additional workforce so let's place our last action disc onto this base this is also unlimited then we check the hiring costs on the local market right now this is on this row so each worker would cost us four coins we can basically buy any number of workers but of course each worker would cost us four coin so in this case i will pay my four coin here really very expensive we have to decrease the amount of workers of course we are allowed to add an additional worker onto the archipelago here and this also means we have to increase the amount of citizens on our archipelago so we are no longer alone hooray as those were already all of our three actions really disappointing i know we come into phase number six which is called evolution cards purchased in the solo game i already explained this to you i have to buy one of those evolution cards if i cannot do that so if i cannot afford any of those cards i immediately lose this game on top of that i also have to rotate two of those cards of course i'm not allowed to rotate the card i'm about to buy and yeah that's pretty much it because rotating those cards in most cases makes those cards a little bit more expensive in this case the export here would get cheaper so this would be really maybe something i would consider doing but i think i only have three florins left so i will go with the commercial fishing here so i will buy this card so the price is three right now so i grab this development card put it next to my player area and the next thing to do would be to reveal a new evolution card from this deck and this will also reveal the next let's call it demand for the balance of the archipelago in most cases this will not affect the gameplay right now but only at the start of the next turn but sometimes they provide those red backgrounds here and this is some events that have to be solved immediately so let's see so this would be the next card though there is no red background here but it also shows us that we have to basically feed our citizens during the next round which is okay and also the foreign or the export market demands one piece of fish but right now there is no fish on the export market so we will definitely see some unrest but first of all let's reveal the tile we just drew and these are roads and oh they're also pretty cheap and uh, this allows me to migrate my citizens one region region further that's okay but right now <laughs> i don't have any possibility to migrate my citizens here because i'm on the island after all so i really need ships so this evolution card might not be the right fit for us and on top of this we still have to rotate two of those cards so let's rotate the export so this got cheaper that's a good thing and i think Ah, huh. yeah, maybe I will go for this scientist here. This also gets or makes him cheaper. This one is really a cool one. I'm really considering to buy this one during the next round or so. Now that we have purchased our very first evolution card, and I'm sorry if I'm mixing development and evolution card, I'm normally playing with the German version of the game. You see that for yourself, but I warned you way ahead of time. So hopefully you're fine with that. But these are evolution card. In this case, this is a progress card. So I'm basically one sixth through the game already because our end of game condition on our Robinson Crusoe scenario says if I ever get six of those evolution card in here doesn't matter if it's a progress or a character card this means the game will end in this phase and then we would tally up our score so we have definitely five more rounds to go if I'm not messing things up here
And then we would jump into round number two. We would disengage all of our workers, pretty much moving them back from the resources. We would go through the balance of the archipelago, through the population effects and whatnot. But I think I will end my playthrough for today. You already have a lot to digest, but I'm pretty sure starting with the next video i will be definitely able to walk you through two entire rounds and then maybe with a third video if that's needed at all i might be able to complete my playthrough of archipelago i really hope you enjoy my little playthrough of archipelago so far hopefully it was worth the wait and yeah hope to see you soon in one of my next videos possibly the play second episode of my playthrough here of course and thanks again for all the nice comments for the voting video on this game and yeah hope to see you soon and until then bye bye <laughs>